Oh, you, you, you go. You go, James. I was supposed to go, yeah, Dan. Okay, Why you, did you, you gasp? Go. You go. Why did you do that to I was, me? I was... Uh, these subtle cues. I'm sorry, James. Continue. Go. Okay, so... Go, my friend. If you want to... Again, like a lot of you... I think almost 440 of you have contributed so far, so you will be helping uh, people such as that young boy to uh, play games such... Well, so hopefully FPS games. You'll see the other video later. He's an FPS player. Shout out to him. But, you know, if, if it's Gran Turismo as well, I can respect that. That's awesome. But, it's yeah, super, it is. It's so, really uh, cool. And also, everyone who is putting in donations will be in for probably the biggest raffle of all time. We've got something like seven Orp Asimovs, Statrak or uh, Asimov M4s, two Orp Booms, lots of Razor gear. You can be you can be swagged out like me. I've come gangster mode today. So, someone, so said we, someone said we dr we dress too formally. They're like, why don't you be more casual? It's uh, like Casual Friday. Well, they don't really stream on Fridays. But hey, look for the, for that one person who said that. I've I've come in with some Razor swag today. But we we will be giving away. One of these will be giving away lots of other stuff as well. You can see we've got chroma keyboards up in here. Look at this. Look at this. I don't know if you can see that. Look. Oh, gorgeous. Gorgeous. <laughs> one of you will win one of those with a, a keyboard bag as well. Lots of um, other things as well. I will put all, everything that we're going to give away on the uh, donation page a bit later on. But definitely get your stuff in. Get your uh, contributions in if you can. And thank you very much. All right. So, guys, time to get to the meat of the of the issue. We do have Fotis Pro and TSM kicking things off today. It's going to be Mirage, and that's actually chosen by Virtus Pro. It's their home map, and as you can see, the odds slightly skewed towards uh, Virtus Pro. But interestingly, again, with this, this TSM lineup, you know, previously of Dignitas, you know, switching out Fetish for Carrigan. They've been with Carrigan for a while now as a new in-game leader. He had one job to do, and so far... You had one job, Carrigan. So far, it's, it's actually going pretty well. Doing like, it well. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Usually that's like, you're, you're going to like berate someone. But, but as you said, he's doing a good job because they're picking up the T rounds. And that's what they really needed. A fantastic CT team. Everyone always knew that. But those T rounds are really important. And especially on a map like Mirage, quite CT sided, if they find themselves on the T side. It, I, I feel like the game could be won really here because both, both of these sides are amazing CT. Um, but obviously, Virtus Pro particularly dominant there. So... And, and they used to actually, <coughs> in my opinion, for, for a while before Fnatic actually came up and were basically became the best Mirage team for quite a while in recent times and the best team generally. I actually felt like Virtus Pro were the best, had the best Mirage uh, CT side. So M Virtus Pro's Mirage CT side was notorious yeah. for a while. It was notorious, like B.I.G. It was, B. Really, it <laughs> it was yeah. really sick. Exactly. All right. So we're going to kick things off here with the pistol round between Virtus Pro and Team Solo Mid. You're watching the Face It League 2015. This is week one, match day two here for the European portion segment, phase, stage, whatever. And uh, already we're seeing TSM gearing up for a bit of an A push, reading up with those grenades. And Virtus Pro with uh, early mid presence to try to see what's going on there. They see nothing at the moment, so they're going to come back and what do they see? Smokes in their face. Virtus Pro have to go for the defense here, but they're isolated by these smokes. So got to wait that out. There's not much else to do other than that. Just get in position here as uh, the rest of their players from B rotate around. And already actually getting challenged. TSM wanted to take aggressively that control of CT spawn, but it's not going to happen for them. And uh, Pasha going to take down Cajun B there, taking the fight straight to the TSM lads. And this is looking absolutely horrendous. I'm very shocked at how amazingly well that went for Virtus Pro. Pa Pasha has been playing so strongly recently. Like the, the last few weeks of his play that I've seen have been really something. He's really operating at the higher echelons of his ability at the moment. And uh, <coughs> seeing his aim is on point today. Sorry, the grenade just went crazy there, but it's, uh, it's under control. It's all under control, guys. So, good start here from Versus Pro. We're seeing Nier running with the MP9. He's playing short with the MP9, so... Ooh, double MP9. Normally, we see, we see, we see double orb down. Now we're seeing double MP9. I think I... Tell us think about I the MP9. The, uh, I can't use this yeah. gun. You can't use it. Yeah, I think, I think there's a significant evidence of that on the internet. Taz with the first kill. Things looking good at the moment. Dupree trying to get up close through some damage with that PC50, but Virtus Pro ready. Yeah, pretty uh, simple defense there for them. And the interesting thing, again, I'm kind of thinking about the pistol around here, is that they 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 went for this super fast play to take over CT spawn, and that actually can be really really strong because once you have CT spawn as the T's, 
it, it pretty much destroys the opportunity for a retake effectively because you can flank from so many angles and put pressure on from so many spots. But uh, <laughs> about this pro, if they keep themselves on point executionally as they are showing in the early couple rounds here, then this is very intimidating for TSM who go for a very fast play now into A once again. Reminiscent of the pistol with those smokes leaving CT spawn open again. Zip Nix with the bomb down. Pasha just tosses a nade over. That's a good connection there from that grenade. Three versus four now in favor of TSM. This setup looks a lot better than it did on the pistol. They're not throwing their lives into CT spawn. Snacks going through the smoke straight in onto the site for the kills. Gets two quick frags. Sipnix and Dupree falling as Cajun B now has to come in. Lone man here for TSM to save the round. Neo in stacks very low. He's going for the hold here, hoping that Neo can provide the cover he needs, and he is going to do just that. And Snacks will get the defuse there in the smoke. Again, well handled by Virtus Pro, but not without their losses. Yeah, that was a, just a small thing that Pasha did. When he got smoked off in this area, he had a Molotov in his hand, and he was about to throw it over to this box after he saw that nade. But he just delayed it for a second and then did a, a timing throw, and his teammates pushed soon after, expecting somebody to potentially pop out, pop out there. So just a small tidbit of team play. And good communication on the Vertus Pro side. Now we can see Pasha is not going to allow anybody in mid today. Taz will come in for the additional cleanup. Lame and rest. that is a very fast flurry of kills in a clean anti-eco round. Yeah, absolutely. Vertus Pro not messing around. However, TSM, they've been getting bomb plants every single round almost, apart from that last one. So we can see them <coughs> up with a strong buy at the moment. AWP on device, which is what we like to see. So let's, uh, let's check out device and see what he's able to accomplish here in middle. Pash is taking his AWP towards B, so device actually will have rain of middle at the beginning. And TSM looking to try to get that mid control. But look at this, Virtus Pro already putting in pressure, already taking a quick frag. There's a one more coming there back into the favor of TSM, but Pasha to respond straight away again. So Virtus Pro cutting down TSM's efforts for map control very early on in this round. Only for the cost of snacks as well, so that's really nice for them. And TSM have to go for a last stitch attempt. Let's pay attention to Pasha's angle. Obviously he's using the op, so he's putting max distance between uh, him and his opponent, but he may rotate for a peek here <coughs> to try and get some information for his team. And uh, apologies for the coughing people, I am not a healthy bunny at the moment. So please bear with me on that one. 45 seconds remaining here. And it looks like we're going to see a contact play here from TSM, which means as soon as they see someone, they rush, or if they get close enough to the window, they may try to charge in as well. But so that somebody is going to be Pasha, and he's there with the AWP. This is not looking good. He saw a pixel there. He's going to spot it. Great peek from Pasha. Picks up the kill onto the vice. All on Zipnix and Carrigan now, as they know exactly where Pasha is. That's not going to worry him at all. And Taz comes in for the finish. And Virtus throw, they uh, take the round. And uh, really, that round was essentially one for them very early on with those quick aggressions. I just want to say again, like, just pay attention to how Pasha uses uh, Molotovs. He's really good at doing this, especially on Inferno. He saw one player go past, he let him go past and took, took down the second player. And then he th immediately threw a Molotov into this area, which is normally where the T's plant. So he's going to try and delay that plant and uh, force him to do it in a more exposed area, should they choose to plant at all. So again, TSM liking the opportunities that they garnered from the set plays onto A. Going to go for a similar move once again. This time, third time's a charm perhaps. As this time, they're actually going uh, to get the smoke down onto CT immediately. And there's Taz. Oh no, by the sandwich, takes down two players easily there. Zipnix and Dupree still alive. But that was a huge effort. That's going to swing things back in the favor of Virtus Pro. That bomb still needs to get planted, and all the CTs are surrounding them. Really rough to deal with, and Zipnik's going to get taken down there as he tries to defend his friend. But at least they got the bomb planted again. Yeah, but that said, at this point... Let's see how expensive they are making things here for Virtus Pro. We're about to go into the buy screen, so we'll see how much they have in the bank. Well, near with $13,000, so... <coughs> I, would, I wouldn't say they're doing too bad at the moment. <coughs> so... The war, they're winning, the, I'd say they're winning the battle and the war then. Yes, they are. They, they're, Why are you they're, they're basically, <laughs> there's not really much you can, you can complain about when it comes to Virtus Pro at the moment. TSM don't seem to be able to, the thing with TSM right now is they haven't actually <coughs> even really shown us a round where they convincingly have taken 
um, controller middle. And from Cash there... Cash is rotating. I, I know I'm completely yeah. cutting you off, but... <laughs> he was in CPL, he was in B, now he's rolling in A. This, is, this seems like a, a rejuvenated, well-oiled machine from the Virtus Pro of past. And I do wonder if it's... They have a, a coach now, don't they? I think they do, actually. Yeah, 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 yeah they do, yeah. I can't remember who it was. Start with oh K or goodness. something? <sighs> something like Cube or something? We, we, we to, yeah, it might be. I have to get back to you. I'm sure someone will tweet us. Rubik's Cube. Rubik's Cube. Um, but absolutely, yeah. Uh, you can see that middle Kurt is completely, completely empty at the moment. James, as TSM now cycle all the way back. They, they were putting the pressure on there early on, but now they're cycling back for a play on 2A. Unfortunately for them, uh, the best case scenario is, is, you know, you take over middle control, you plant somebody, like one or two players, in connector before you then, then do this. LGB were doing this perfectly yesterday, and it makes <coughs> for a really strong three-pong attack. But TSM, they have to rely on excellent entries like that. You can see Pasha's body twitching there, his leg just That's twitching. That's the weirdest kill cam I've ever seen. Like, it's yeah. a swim after he was dead, and then was twitching. So, uh, Virtus Pro now scurrying for the retake. Snacks cautiously trying to approach CT spawn into that A-bomb site. Able to pick up the kill into Carrigan. That's definitely going to help massively now as it will open up more avenues for them to attack this bomb site. Taz is tentatively peeking from stairs. They know that TSM must have a few players there towards the slope, but it's not going to matter. In comes Zipnix from the balcony and they are all going to go down. Excellent play there from TSM. A much better A round from them. But the thing that... The big question mark for me, James, is still that it feels as though their T rounds are completely reliant mm. on basically hitting hitting shots, winning one on ones, instead of let's say yesterday when we saw LGB Mirage, which was all about the strategy for them. Yeah, yeah, they were <coughs> pretty much pretty well drilled on the strats. I have I have to uh, confess I've been paying more attention to the CT play as opposed to the T, possibly because I'm a self-confessed versus pro fanboy, but. Let's have a focus on how the T's are playing. Again, they are quite stacked up over to the A-bomb site at the moment. Again, got these uh, Molotovs just stopping a two-pronged assault for the longest time. Allowing two mates to rotate, allowing the T's to get into better positions. Carrigan, though, with another opening frag onto the A-bomb site. We saw it recently. Bomb is being planted in the smoke as well. Cautionary grenade there. Dupree still going to try and hold the flank, but he, he will uh, not get the better of Neo. <laughs> so here we go. Trace coming in, three on three, the bomb ticking away. The timer has been put to the CTs. And they are trying to make their way in. That's a good grenade, though, and Zip is going to be peeking out to take the frag onto Neo. Trey comes in, though, but still two on one here for TSM. Looking great now for the Danes. And there it is, going to be finishing Snacks off, and the round will be won by TSM. So six to two, the score, as TSM begin <coughs> to work things back to their favor. But once again, I can't help but feel like we might start to see Virtus Pro adjusting themselves a little bit to the heavy A-oriented finishes that we're seeing from TSM. Yeah, things starting to get expensive now for the Polish side as a uh, bit of shenanigans. Oh, I thought they were going for the full buy there, but in fact, they're going for the one AWP, four pistol buy. Again, we saw them, uh, they made it famous on the T side of cash, and now we see it again. Let's see how successful it will be. Pasha is playing out of his mind at the moment, so, but with smokes in the way, there's only so much he can do. Absolutely, and once again, TSM going for the A play. They've pretty much given up middle and B completely as they're more or less playing that uh, game mode. What was it, like retakes? Have you played that? It's pretty awesome, yeah. But uh, Zach's going to go in with the Deagle. Take down two players very quickly. Pick up weapons as well, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, They've got the no poles kit. have an advantage. But as you say, the time is not on their side. Okay, could have smoked the fuse there, but can, can Patch find him in time? Smoke the fuse is going to fail. Passion needs to get out of there. Save that all for the next round. Yeah, he'll be all right. So, uh, a slight oversight there, potentially, from Versus Pro. Maybe something to add to the repertoire. Uh, the fuse kit. <laughs> Along with those guys. Indeed. Indeed. So, will TSM keep, just keep going, eh? That's, that's the question right now. We have uh, Virtus Pro, who now have their buy again. And I, you know, they aren't a team that's, let's say, foreign at playing a little bit aggressively on some some CT positions to find out some information. So, wouldn't put it past them to like pop flash down T slope and try to get some info there. Because right now TSM are all towards B. So if they were to try to play close for information on A, they would be able to deduce more or less where TSM are at the current moment. And, uh, 
can see that Virtus Pro are moving up middle as well. So actually, Cajun B going to take down Neo. That's only one player spotted. And that actually doesn't tell them very much. Just seeing Cajun B there. And now they know Push comes in on top of that B bomb site. Be pretty in by the van there. Jumping over the top. There's a CT around here somewhere. If only he could find Snacks. But Snacks will eventually go down to Zipnix and the bomb will get planted. And honestly, this has to be a save here for Virtus Pro. It's going to be so difficult for them to get in unless Pasha is able to get a couple of free ones. I don't think they were going to like their chances for this. But there it is. Piali picks up one in Kitchen as well. So now the odds are drastically changed. That's his pro going in. Biali going to find a player. A headshot. Dupree gets the better of him, though. Now Taz going to try his luck, and he's going to find himself much luckier than his teammate. But there is uh, Pasha still not wanting to commit, unless Taz would have picked up another frag. And yeah, at that point, Pasha's basically just holding the angle to try and stop TSM getting out of the site. He wants to make as many of their players die as possible. And with Cajun B, the only one to survive, they didn't do a bad job. Solomid have made adjustments and are starting to get back into this match. Two-round deficit now. Virtus Pro, again, you can see there. They, they were starting to roll in the cash, but that cash has all been burned in a massive tower by uh, Mr. Heisenberg. All right. I have... <laughs> This reference to a sword right over my head, James. God damn it. I know, they, they all do, Dan. They all do. They all do. Your references are too strong for me. Your reference game is, is too... You don't know Heisenberg? I, well, I know the scientist. You, you probably just lo lost about a thousand followers on Twitter. I know. I know. He's in that book that you lent me. Oh, all dear. right. TSM now are going to go in for the push here onto B, so starting to mix things up. Virtus Pro. None the wiser. Only going to find out about this now. But already a player on the site there. A couple players drifting onto the site through the, the apartments. And TSM are going to get the bomb down in the effort with the two opening, uh, with the one opening frag on two snacks. Dupree going to spray down to Pasha. Going to find his way into the crosshairs of Dupree. And here goes Taz. Quick execution of Dupree there. Knows where the last player is. It's quite a lot of time, but wow. Cajun B just just runs straight at him. He doesn't try to play the angle at all. He just goes for it. And I, I gotta say, um, <laughs> Taz was surprised and so was I. You, yeah. don't, you don't expect him to just <coughs> go for that. Because he gave up what was actually a really good position to play with post plant just to run out for a kill. It's a pretty Balls risky. of steel, Dan. Balls of steel. Yeah, Cajun B is actually quite monstrous. He's, uh, he's get, it's, it feels like he's getting better and better these days. He's seeing a lot of strong results, but wow. Has with the spray through the smoke. You've got to be careful with those smokes there. On, on that bottom left corner, on Cajun B's view, that often uh, gives you a gap that you can see through going both ways. Actually, more often than not, you can see more from a T side looking to CT than the, the vice versa, but maybe he wasn't paying attention there. But good uh, exploits of the information there by Taz. And the problem with that is also if they wanted to go for a set play, which they've shown the propensity for in previous rounds. Now they're they're down a man, and that's also meaning that they're, they're down a bunch of nades. So that's one smoke that they would have needed for the push. That's not going to be there. So they have to go to a different plan. They're changing things up at the moment. We have Neo, who's over by short, looking cautiously from the, the ladder room for something. But TSM now slowly finding their way down middle. So they're largely covered from this position. I do like this here. They've set up two straight into connector. Virtus Pro have no idea. They've given this area up as well. But there's two players close on the site by Shadow and the, the boxes of the site themselves. So this actually looks like a quite a strong setup here for Virtus Pro for the defense. But how well can the Danes execute? Going to be moving in now. Cajun B going straight through the CPL. Picks up the kill on Neo. Going to shut down the vent. And now it's just Viali on the bomb site with the Famas. He's only going to get one. And oh my goodness, Pasha with a jump shot on the scout. Will the madness ever end with that scout? Well, Snacks is going to be coming in from CPL now to see what he can accomplish. So playing that, oh my goodness, finds that Cajun B, but perhaps there was an issue there with him. And that's going to give Snacks a huge advantage into this round as that bomb is ticking away. And there's only 13 points of health on Carrigan. Like slowly creeping closer and closer. Now just going to peek for the frag, and he's going to get it without any trouble. And there you go. Round picked up by Virtus Pro. And it <coughs> seems like TSA may have had an issue there. But I, I feel like they're doing quite well as far as uh, rounds goes. And uh, the amount of damage that they're dealing in some of these fights and the fact that they're getting the bomb down so, so often is actually really good by TSM. Yeah. And again, 
After a super strong start from Virtus Pro, TSM definitely giving up more of a fight than we saw early on. Three rounds remaining in this first half. And again, there's a significant presence. We've got two people at mid as well, including the bomb. Harrigan going to tap Pasha down. Just tap him on the head and that's going to be that for him. So, significant presence in mid. Came out with two people at first, top mid. Smoked off the short area. See the uh, preemptive nade towards what is known as Delpan. Oh, and this, this is the round that I was kind of talking about as well, where they slowly are able to take middle, and then they can leave one or two players to go to connector and then cycle the rest back to A slope if they wanted to. But they did lose their man on A slope, though, with a nice little push from versus Pro, which will equalize it four versus four. So they may even think about changing their plan here. We'll have to see what TSM decide is going to be wise. And in fact, they're going to put three players through, including the bomber, through jungle here. And as they slowly spread out, they're going to be clearing... Angle upon angle, we've got Device going to be timing his push up slope with the rest of his teammates. Look at this sneaky movement here from the Danes. Team Solo mid, going to get themselves into CT spawn and perhaps all the way to B. Oh my goodness, look at that. They're all the way in the kitchen now. And Virtus Pro have no idea what's going on. They can't possibly have foreseen this. Oh, the Snacks think he's got a flank. The he one blind running spot. back. They can be going to find Snacks, but Snacks will get the frag. And they know what's up now, and they're going to be coming in for the retake. It's a 2 on 4, actually, but TSM, they did have time for these remaining two players to get a nice setup going. But Drew Pre, so important for him to get at least one or two frags there, but he got absolutely nothing. And he smoked off Harrigan. He's got his back to a wall there. And he's going to get eliminated. So it is the round saved by Virtus Pro, but it's quite awesome how TSM snuck into the singular blind spot of Virtus Pro's team there. That was some mastermind business. But good recovery there by Virtus Pro. So, score isn't terrible for them, I wouldn't say. Obviously, they're probably expecting uh, TSM to have more, sorry, less rounds. But TSM, no slouch on Mirage. Strong team in their own right. <coughs> they do have some shen shenanigans on this, uh, on this map, which we won't talk about. But... No, definitely well oiled, we'll put it that way. And uh, they've had some great plays towards A. This round's probably not gonna gonna count as one of those. Wow. But uh, that was utter annihilation there from Virtus Pro. And TSM, all they all they really need to do is just I mean that five rounds is respectable. Five rounds is actually fantastic. You know, getting one more, the opportunity to get one more is even potentially great for them as well. Uh, they're gonna have a decent buy coming going into this one as well, so yeah, I mean, TSM, they did the job they needed to do. I think 10-5 is largely kind of the scoreline that you'd expect uh, CT to T. But um, at the moment, Virtus Pro. I'm not sure how their T sides have been developing recently on, the, on Mirage, actually. It's, it was usually about them just hitting those 12 threes on the CT. But uh, what, do, what do you expect here looking at the second half, James? For Virtus Pro, or are you just going to take screenshots? Are you just going to take screenshots of people? It's the less I talk, the better, Dan. I'm not sure if you noticed. <laughs> <laughs> you can say as much as you like. But today, today is free reign. There's no timer today. No timer. This oh is like God. this is like timer scam for you, that Dan. You've got a timer scam going today. Oh my God! You have to you have to bring out the, <coughs> the timer later so people actually know. What I need about. I need water. I need water and uh, a therapeutic massage. Not from you. Yeah, I was, 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 was going to be clear and say, don't expect that from me. By the way, here I, have, I, do, I do great work for massages. But. Either way, we're going to have... Just, just, just letting people know, James, all right? Gonna have <laughs> you goat tiger. <laughs> going to have them go for the AX execute again. They do have one lurker in middle to try to catch rotations. It's Dupree here. He's actually going to find himself a jewel. Didn't get the quick kill, though, so that's actually really annoying now. Dupree going to go all the way back. So he's largely ineffectual in this round at the moment as he tries to cycle back around T-Spawn to help his teammates. Cajun B and Zipnix able to take the frags, but they're not on the sites. That is the key problem at the moment. And Virtus Pro are slowly making their way back onto position here. They have a uh, connector. One, one close to jungle and one CT spawn. TSM with a bit of a delay now. Putting a little bit of doubt into Virtus Pro. Are now going to go for it. Zipnix wrapping around thanks to the T-Flash there. Able to take down Pasha, but the trades come in. 2 on 2 now. 
Excellent team play there. Finding that 2 on one against Snacks. No hope for him. Bialy now. All rests on his shoulders. And he goes and immediately taken down Dupree with the wall bang headshot. 9-6 first half. And that is a good half here for TSM, I've got to say. Yeah, not a bad half at all. I'm quite curious to see how they will do now on the Carrigan-led CT side. Again, has been a significant change in their consistency, you might say. That's a roster replacement. <coughs> but first, they've got to get through the pistol. So we've got Device rocking the Julies. He's going to be playing them over in this area. This is, if he stands under the ledge, actually, with the Julies, oh, he's just going full Rambo. So they actually have two on this position as well. That's quite unexpected, but it's quite powerful as well. And we've got three players moving through under passes. So they're going to go for the. Uh, the A splits there, a double pronged attack through connector and through slope. Cage and B gonna spot the action though. Three players made on the call here as his, uh, the teammates of Virtus Pro slowly push up slope and they're gonna try to help their teammates who were pinned down in that connector area, but it's just not going their way. It's like TSM with an excellent round at the moment. Only losing two players and they clean it all up. And we do have the pistol for them. That's actually really, really huge at the moment because <coughs> they, if they get momentum going, that can be really devastating. I think the intention with the Julies was to bounce the smoke off this wall so, so it pops fast and then just fire away as they run past him. But mm, yeah, we didn't see it on that occasion, but judging by the angle he was holding with the nade, I do believe that was the purpose. And maybe uh, the teammate was there for bait. So we've got a smoke on Bialy. It's pistol armor time for them. They didn't get the bomb down, so they've got a double eco anyway. And uh, TSM, they will know this. They will be expecting this. You can see them already set up just with their positioning. Wow, Dupree instantly taken down. Only gets one frag for his troubles. And Virtus Pro storming on through with the Tech Nines, looking to get the bomb down in the smoke immediately. Bialy going to be planting that one. So, really good work here by Virtus Pro. And that's a great... Frag to be found by Bialy with the P250. The Vice and Zipniks need to save this for their team. And uh, that nade's going to find absolutely nothing but air. As we have Neo up by the stairs now. There's the jump from Zipniks. Not going to give him much of anything, really. And uh, the Vice in an awkward spot gets annihilated by the P90 that Neo had picked up. And uh, that's, uh, that's awkward, James. This happens yes, a lot, though. <coughs> that's not what you want against Versus, against Versus Pro, that's for sure. This happens a lot at the high level because they're so damn good with We've pistols. seen it a lot recently, haven't we? I think there was a NIP match recently as well. They were playing, I think it might be NIP versus Envy. Maybe last week, I want to say. I could be wrong, but I think that's right. And there was the trades. The trades were real, Dan. Oh, we, we had a match the yesterday. The trades were legit. They had the badge of authenticity. They had a little holographic everything. We had the match yesterday, TSM versus Fnatic, where... It actually, like, they both were pistol armoring each other consecutively, round after round after round. <laughs> it was ridiculous. I do believe it was that match. Ooh, that's yes. flash. But it didn't flash. Maybe it was too far away. Or was it Cobble? I think it was Cobble, actually. Yeah, but it's Pro-NMV. Um, so, back <coughs> into this round, of course, uh, TSM trying to keep the pressure on the economy of Virtus Pro by going for a full buy of their own. Knowing that Virtus Pro perhaps don't have the strongest weapons in the world, but they do have all the nades, and that makes all the difference. Isolating those players, taking them down systematically. And we can see that TSM not going to have a good time here in this one. Going to try to keep what they have alive, go for potential exits. Device, yeah, Device is playing for the exits. Uh, Cajun B is playing for the short angle for any peaks. And Zipnix potentially playing bait, maybe, but he is uh, rotating into B as the hunt is beginning. Uh oh. Uh oh, here comes Neo. Oh no, he looks the right. Oh, of course, timing. Timing. That's so sad, isn't it? Always happens. And now, oh wow, he still gets a great reaction shot there. Oh yeah, that's a great feature of Counter Strike right there. <laughs> well, jumping with a scout and uh, being accurate still. I know that you love that. I do indeed. I love it's abusing great. it. I love abusing it. It's, it's really fun, but it, I'll abuse it, it. But it shouldn't be in the game. I'll abuse it because otherwise it, it will. Yeah, of course, you have to. Be the abusey or be the abuser. I'll be the abusey on this occasion. Probably not the best analogy I've ever made. Yeah, we'll move on. Over that. We'll you kind of messed that up completely. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. I don't want to abuse anyone, right? I'm, I'm just a nice guy from London. Do you say you want to be the abusey, but 
Anyway, moving on. Just, just, just keep going. Keep going. <laughs> keep soldiering on. We get a tag onto Snacks with that jump spot on the scout. Cajun B putting in the work there. And if I just pray at the moment, I'm just uh, sending, sending uh, Pasha in to just basically scout whether or not there's going to be a stack here. And they haven't seen all that much apart from one guy with oh, a scout. Oh, that's made. So, ooh, that's good work there. They do finally root out Device, who's in the corner. Sitnix now by headshot, looking for the frags with the P250. And so far, going to not get all that much. It's a bit of damage done. That is pro cleaning up, but in comes the flank from Dupree, but he's only got himself a USP, but apparently that is enough to take down Taz. Two players launching themselves <coughs> out the apartments, and that is pro cleaning up the house. I think the coach is called Cuban. Cuban. The coach is called Cuban. I believe so. Ah, so ah, Cuban, Cuban is a 1.6 pro who was originally on the Golden 5. Yes. It says producer Reese. Thank you very much, sir. So it is Cuban. So Kurt, Kurt Cubane. <laughs> so 12 to 7 is the score right now. And Virtus Pro definitely starting to run away with things a little bit here. And this is where TSM could really put a stop to all of that. But they're playing really, really big ranges from all these positions here. They do, do have one player in apartments on the B side of the map, the B apps, who's got a deep angle. So they're going to perhaps uh, expect this. But now Virtus Pro coming in quite quickly with this push. TSM are really far back. They can't respond to this appropriately at all. And there you go. The smoke's now cutting them off. Zipnik's up on the top. We've been able to take a quick frag onto Bialy. And now it's a three on three. But still, those smokes are up there. Yeah, see, so he's gone to grab the molly. Causing more havoc with it. And uh, nice flash. Here we go. In they are for the retake up. Now the smokes have dissipated. Snacks heavy. Putting a Molotov down for good measure, and look at that. Up on top of the crate is no problem for Snacks to deal with. Zipnix gets eliminated. And 13 to 7 now the score as TSM are hurtled back into tumultuous times on the, e the economy, to say the least. This is uh, really rough for them now as we're getting so late into into the match. And but it's probably only three away from just winning this one outright. So despite having a good start, TSM not flexing their CT muscles. This is Virtus Pro's pick, right? Yes. This is their home map. This is their home map. They're coming in confident, and they're showing you why. They've always, be, yeah, they've always been a really confident Mirage team. Um, definitely goes down to the kind of the, some of the history we were talking about before, I think. But their T side is looking quite, quite good at the moment. They've had some nice set plays in onto the A site. Some good middle takes. Some good anticipations of how TSM are rotating, how they're moving on the map. And they've been exploiting their positioning well also, as uh, is a good example on the previous round, in fact. So here it is, versus Pro now, without losing a single player just yet. Can they finish it off? Nice spray control there from Bialy. Picks up the last two kills. 14 to 7, and uh, we might have a pretty fast opening match here for, <coughs> for uh, day number two. So versus Pro, they, they, seem to they seem to know the map too well. Just all these little things they've been doing, like when they needed the CT position at the end of the balcony, they just Molotov the connector area there. There was something else that I can't remember now. But they're, they are just so sharp at the moment. It's really great to see. And look at this. This is actually a very similar setup that Fnatic used with a bit of a variation with device on short instead of being in connector where Crims would be. And that allows them to basically have a good presence on middle without over committing or giving away what they're doing and covering each other from multiple angles if someone is to push top mid or underpass. So I like that. That's really cool there from TSM. But they do see nothing. And Pasha is going to peek out and get a quick, quick opening kill on the A site. So now things are getting a little bit awkward here for TSM. They've got to rotate a player. They've got no one actually on the site at all. And they're completely cut off by these smokes. Cajun B is going to have to pull out a pretty good result here for Virtus Pro are to commit onto this site, which is looking to be what is going to happen any moment now. And there it is. KGB gets a quick frag. Can he find anything else? Looks like he won't. Pasha is going to take him down. And a good flash over, but Dupree. Way too telegraphed there. Picked up by Bialy. Trades coming in, though. Zip next with two. That is going to equalize the situation. 30 seconds left on the clock. Bomb looking to go down any second now. This device creeps around from CPL. Putting in some shots there onto Snacks. 
was unawares and pulling out the AWP and the bomb needs to go down. Pasha finally plants it. Can he save this round here for the poles? It's good. A little flash and peek, but Zipnix, great triple kill in that round. Really saving TSM's bacon. So they survived to see another round for the time being. Snacks has a lot of money in the bank, as do most of the other team members. There are quite a few around the 10,000 mark, so they won't be too concerned for a while. The AWP does come out for Pasha again. And double AWPs again for TSM. We saw it in the previous round. We see it this round as well. <coughs> it was an expensive round for both teams. And you can, you can look at the CT economy following that Dubai, despite winning the round there. So everything to play for here. This day, their uh, life is really on the line. They do not want versus, versus Pro on that match point. That would not be... That would be less than optimal. It would be suboptimal. Suboptimal. Oh, yes. Okay, so Cajun B now challenging underpass with the AWP. He's got cover there from his teammate. I think he can get taken out. I think there's an angle. There is, I think. Yeah, yeah you I'm can see convinced. he's wary of it as well. Yeah. Doesn't want to stay around there too long, but but it's still it's, he's still relatively safe, and uh, his teammate can peek to close the distance it if need be. And now they're going to go for the delayed middle take here. So Virtus Pro expecting perhaps there to be less oh. players, but no device with a double on the AWP. That's massive. That is not the welcoming Virtus Pro had in mind. They thought they were strolling into what could be an empty middle. Absolutely not. Four against three now. Virtus Pro have to quickly make a call here. And you can see that they got Snacks into connector promptly. And this is going to allow them for that uh, split into A. So this, could, this is a really nice way to potentially save this round. Yeah, you can see Taz is starting to walk now with the bomb in T spawn. Not going to want to give the game away. If someone is in mid, they would hear him rang in, in that area, but never mind that Carrigan takes down Bardi. So four versus two now. The flank coming in from Snacks, but with 15 seconds on the clock, I'm not sure if they can get the plant down. You can see Dupree still in control of CT spawn at the moment, and you can see that will force away the plant. He's gonna run through the smoke, take down the planter as well, and that's gonna be the end of the round. He needs to kill two players here, not enough time oh, to plant the bomb. Plant. He has enough time. He oh gets wow, it, excuse me. Yeah, that was really, really close. That was again. That yeah. was that was a brave plant because yeah. When I'm when I'm saying he he couldn't he couldn't plant the bomb because he had a, there was a crossfire from the CTs, but they killed him 0.1 seconds after planting. You can see Dupree just delaying the uh, diffuser so his teammate can pick up some weapons. Now the thing I really like about what Virtus Pro did there is that how they so quickly decided immediately. Boom! This is this is Plan B. This is our. Like, we wanted to do this. Two players instantly die, so we had to scrap that. And then instantly there was the call. We're going to put one guy in connector and then put the other two in, into slope for a quick play. And it, they did that immediately. That, that happened almost immediately as a response. And there's got to give them big props for that because every, you can see every second counts. Yeah, and that's the kind of decision making that caused uh, TSM to make a change as well. To put Carrigan in there so they had a stronger mm. mid calling, which exactly seems to be going well for them so far. But they are... 9 to uh -oh. 14 versus Virtus Pro on Virtus Pro's choice. Nightmare setup. This is an absolute nightmare. Virtus Pro, how on earth can they break this? Three players up close, personal here for TSM, looking for those frags. However, Virtus Pro are going to be able to get the trades here. However, it is in favor of TSM still. But two orbs in their hands. The Vice is going to be one of those, able to take down Neo. That's the bomb in the open, in the, in the most precarious of spots there. Super exposed. You can see Bialy is very aware. The two angles. Oh wow! Picks off Cage and B. That's one orper. Zip Nixon device actually quite low. Act in fact, both 50% uh, and below on the health. Goes for the fake. Bialy, can he make this happen? Right now, 40 seconds left. Going to go for the plant here and device. Oh my goodness! Missing two shots that should have been connected. Now he's got to be sweating right now because he's giving Bialy chances, but fifth finally, times charm. fifth time's a charm indeed. I imagine if Bialy would have won the round after that, that would, the vice would, would be tilting, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I, I think he was just trying to take the shot as fast as possible because he knows how strong Bialy is. So do I, which is why I tried to buy him for my dream team, but I didn't have the cash, Dan. Yeah, I want to get make sure that plant doesn't go You're down. You're getting body in the dream team, aren't you? I, I don't care. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're an NV fanboy and they lost their first game. Who are they playing tonight? They're playing. They're playing. He says with a desperate voice. They're playing Titan. I like their chances against Titan. Okay, but how about TSM's chances in this match? They are four rounds behind yeah. here. Virtus Pro two rounds away.
from taking this, but they haven't reached that match point just yet. And they've oh, been that's gorgeous. Been on a run prior for a while. That was delicious. That was delectable. Amazing shot there. And I, I, I rarely see players make use of that angle, that quick little boost hopping up onto that ledge to actually get that deeper angle to the player that's uh, over by the stairs. So that's actually amazing to pick that up. You can see how fast he went for that too. So again, you know, Virtus Pro are going to have to really rely on that awesome mid-round calling that we're talking about. And they got Pasha into CPL. This could be interesting right now. Look at him. He's there with uh, Taz actually. And Taz could actually peek to distract, which would allow Pasha to then peek out and get the kill into Cajun B. However, Cajun B is a very deep angle here. And uh, he will take down Pasha. Is the trade going to come in? He's still visible, I think. If there was to be a peek, he's not looking. But uh, Taz is not brave enough in this instance to go for it. Gonna go for an angle through connector instead. But his teammates really need him at the moment. What teammates? Uh, They're all dead. <laughs> They're all, all dead now. But Taz is gonna be able to pick up one frag. Three players left to find, and Taz is too low. Gets finished <coughs> off by the pistol of Cajun B. And there's a 14 to 11 scoreline now, as TSM do claw their way back. But look at the money here. TSM are really struggling on the cash to get these these uh, drops and buys in, despite winning the rounds. Well, they've got, a, they've got a, they've finally they've on a save. They've maxed out their buy here. They've got everything they need. They're making it work for the time being. But again, one slip up and that could be curtain. And Cajun B is doing the curtain call in versus Pro Zico. Like shooting fish in the barrel. Have you ever done that, James? No, that's horrible. Is it really? Well, that sounds like some kind of animal cruelty, then. Well, people kill fish all the time. In barrels with guns? Is that uh, what you're I, saying? I don't know, maybe. Maybe on a larger scale. With dynamite and stuff. I don't know how, th how people do things these days. Dynamite. Dynamite. First we had the issue with toast, and now you're talking about fish and dynamite. You got you have a problem with that, James? <laughs> wow. Where do we go from this? Fishing with dynamite. Hopefully back into Counter-Strike. Alright, well, <laughs> we are back into Counter-Strike. It's another set play, it would seem, coming in from Virtus Pro, looking for that. All the A smokes, all the A flashes, but once again, actually, really good setup here for TSM to deal with exactly this. Three players... All in close proximity here. So we can see, ready to quickly respond to this. One in Palace, one now on the sandwich area. And uh, I'll have to see if they're going to be able to pick up the kills there. They've got a guy on stairs as well. So counter flash game should be pretty good here for TSM if they play their cards right. Look at this point blank range. Oh, but he's rotating away from Palace. And Carrigan quickly gets to a more passive position. Counter nades coming in again. Versus Pro are fully committed right now. 45 seconds, no more map control. They have to go for this. Yeah, quite, quite a few repositions here, but it's going to be pretty effective here. Is Carrigan going to pick up one frag? Neo with the trade, though, as Carrigan was very exposed in the middle of the site. Still the advantage there for TSM. Dupree over the top there gets almost nothing. It's a bit of damage, and it's all on Taz. Quick couple frags from him. Can he save the round? There's 20 seconds to go. Zipnix is over by CT spawn, and he's going to hear the bomb get planted. There it is, gets the peak there, and that's beautiful. That's going to put Taz off of planting that bomb, and Cajun B is going to get the shot with the AWP, and that's 13 to 14 there. One away from tying things up, and Virtus Pro, they are struggling on the money now. Look at this. They have almost no cash left. In fact, they have basically no cash left. Yeah, it's crunch time for them. They've Failed time and time again, and now it's uh, time to succeed. Otherwise, this game is going to be tied up with a great comeback from TSM. Both teams known for their CT sides. I know the previous lineup for TSM always said that uh, their T sides were quite underestimated. Although, it is the, T, the, T, the CT side. That's what, that's, that's what they said. <laughs> That's what they say. <laughs> That's what they say. People say a lot. James, just going to break it to you. People say a lot of things. <laughs> wow. It's been laid down there by Dan. I think it was Fetish that said that as well back in the old Dignitas lineup when TSM were Dignitas. But it was. Virtus Pro now have uh, got Neo on connector. This is beautiful here. Neo's so, so effective there. He's got so much utility. 
to play with. And look at how effective this is. The distraction's coming in just at the right moments. Taz picks up a free one over at the toll booth. Cajun B now in an impossible situation. But Bialy going to gun him down. And it rests on Zipnix to try to save this one now. Let's take down Neo. But there's three players left for him to find. Bomb does get planted. And there's two actually on the site itself. Zipnix might find himself in some interesting engagements here. He might be able to do this. Making it into a one-on-two. Zipnix now. He's getting lower and lower. Finds another one-on-one. -on -one, but it will be Bialy that takes it. And another round for Virtus Pro. They're on 15. They're on match point. Can they close? Can they close? Of course, we're going to see the buy coming out for CTs. And, ooh. The money. But it doesn't matter. At okay, Carrigan just about makes it. It's gone on the floor for him. But yes, this is this is all in for both teams. A lot of money Sarx is on TSM. Indeed, there are. Uh, you know, you, on a CT side, you saw Taz likes to opt for the M4, wants to spray people down. He wants to get in there, get aggressive, engage multiple opponents. So he needs those extra bullets. And look at this aggressive push coming in here from TSM. And there is the cover. Pasha's got Taz covered. Some good flashes over the top there. That Those kinds of flashes are going to be much more effective to players who are pushed close. So good response there from Virtus Pro to clear themselves into middle. Off to the back of that first kill. Lots of pressure now on TSM. Extra holes added to their defense. As Virtus Pro can move essentially wherever they want. They've got a player on slope, but they could use him as distraction. They could use him to cut off rotation. They can hit B, or they can combine onto a, a two-prong push onto A. They have all these options. Looks like they want to choose the option at the moment in towards B, or at least take over window, which will, would give them even more avenues of attack into A. So you can see Virtus Pro using everything they possibly can here to try to get more edges, more advantages into the push of the A bomb site as they drop into CPL. Here they go, two men at once. Nothing Dupree can do. It's a quick kill from Device, but he's locked away there. They know exactly where he is, and he's going to plan open. And this is perfect for Virtus Pro. They're setting themselves up for an incredibly strong finish here. And Snacks wins his one-on-one. -on -one. And it's on Device with the AWP in a one-on-four with the bomb down. He's got to go for it. And here is the first challenge. He's going to pass that test, but Taz is going to put a bullet in his face. So Virtus Pro showing why they are still one of the most dangerous teams in the world on Mirage. Taking down a very strong opponent in TSM again. Versus Pro were the home team, and that was their pick of the five remaining maps following the first two vetoes from TSM. So, how do you feel about that one? I I feel like it was an expected result, but I feel like TSM they looked they looked good on 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 T. But of course, the thing is, is that that for me that was that was good. Seeing the game, what was it six rounds? It was, it was nine six first off, so they got six rounds on T. That was great. The problem is they won the CT pistol, and then they got pistol armored. And the problem with that pistol armor as well is that you, you know that it's coming. And I feel like they got caught off guard with it in some of the positions. Like some of the positions weren't too optimal. Like for example, Dupree was close with a P90 and he got taken down immediately. Like his position was kind of terrible for it mm -hmm. because he's in this spot where if he's going to get one frag, he's always going to get traded on because he's so close that by the time he gets one kill, they will have enough time to basically be on, his, on top of him. So it, it feels like, they, I don't know, it's hard. It's always hard when you're against players like Virtus Pro because with P250s, which are quite accurate, they can get the dinks from like huge ranges. So it's, I don't know, it's one of these things with CSGO, isn't it, James? How do you feel about, about the pistol armor? Because we see it once so often in It's CSGO. dangerous. It's dangerous. So how, do you, how do you deal with it effectively? It's, it's hard. I don't even know if there's a great answer. Well, I, I think the main, the main thing is ranges. You put yourself in ranges where you don't get one tapped. And, and uh, as you, well, I guess. yeah, exactly. Maybe if you're on the CT side, you have to try and opt for some aggression as opposed yeah. to laying back, try to take control um, ahead of certain checkpoints which are favorable for pistols. Yeah. Just an idea. What's our second match of today? All right, so we do have uh, Titan and Envy uh, playing up next on Cash. So that's going to be a fantastic, fantastic game. I look forward to that one. So we will take a quick break, guys, whilst we set up the next match. So stay with us here on Face It TV for the second match here on day, play day two of week one of the Face It League 2015 European portion. <laughs> 